Named after a district in Hawaii, the Hyundai Kona joins the Korean firm's SUV range below the Tucson and Santa Fe. From launch it will sell alongside the similarly sized X20 compact MPV, although for how long remains to be seen. Kona expands the Hyundai range. It's a fast-growing crossover sector that the Kona's being launched into. Sized to compete with Nissan's Duke and the Vauxhall Crossland X, along with the Peugeot 2008 and Renault Capture, there will be rivals from the Volkswagen Group as well as the MG XS over the coming year. It's an important car for Hyundai, as it continues a number of new visual themes, introduced in the latest generation i30 hatchback, albeit with a Citroën-inspired vibe. It rides on the modified version of the i20 hatchback's platform and is shared with its closely related Kirstonic cousin. Option of all-wheel drive and dual-clutch automatic, the Kona comes with a range of turbocharged engines, consisting of 1.0-litre and 1.6-litre petrols and a 1.6-litre diesel in two power outputs. Likely to be the cheapest is the 1.0-litre 120-horsepower petrol while the most economical should be the lesser diesel engine with 115 horsepower. Meanwhile, the most powerful, the 177 horsepower 1.6 litre petrol, comes with all-wheel drive and a dual-clutch automatic gearbox as standard and is capable of accelerating to 62 miles per hour in a brisk 7.9 seconds, compared with 12.0 seconds for the 1.0 litre. The 1.0 litre. On the other hand, comes with a six-speed manual gearbox and front-wheel drive, as does the 115 horsepower diesel, while the 136 horsepower diesel will also be available in automatic, all-wheel drive form when the diesels arrive in mid-2018. An all-electric Kona is also expected to arrive in 2018. All engines have been tuned for low engine speed punch to make them easy to drive with palatable fuel economy. Expect just above 50 miles per gallon for the 1.0 litre petrol and just under 40 miles per gallon from the 1.6 litre. Figures for the diesels will be announced closer to them arriving in showrooms. Channeling its power to the road, the Kona will come with chunky alloy wheels up to 18 inches in diameter for a rugged look. Reasonably high ground clearance of 170 mm for the Kona means that you should be less likely to scrape the underside of this high end eye when negotiating steep, bumpy driveways or heading down rutted campsite roads than with a conventional hatchback. Kona gets serious outside and in, it looks good on the outside. The slim day running lights DRLs are a new high end eye feature, neatly house incorporated turn signals and are positioned in a stack, separate to the fold headlamps. At the back, you get a set of LED lamps, with the slim tail lights being supplemented by separate clusters housing the brake lights, indicators and reversing lamps. It's a similar arrangement to that employed on the Kia Sportage. It's decluttered inside, with a split-level dashboard that leaves the display monitor appearing to float above it. It's a setup that debuted in the i10 and i30, and which simplifies the way the heating, ventilation and air conditioning controls work. Hyundai has been working hard to perfect the ergonomic experience of its mainstream cars. What personalization options are there? Like the Nissan Duke, the Hyundai Kona will allow you to personalize your car with bright paint colors, contrasting roof tones and zingy interior trim. Buyers can choose from a wide range of hues including lime green and bright orange to help make their car stand out. On the inside colored stitching and similarly saturated accents on the steering wheel around the gear lever and on the seat belts should help you to tailor the Kona to your tastes. What tech do you get in the high-end Kona? There's all the safety equipment you'd expect to find in an Alnu family SUV. The Kona receives autonomous emergency braking, called forward collision avoidance assist here with pedestrian detection lane keeping assist LKA, high beam assist HBA, and driver attention warning door. You also get blind spot assist cross-traffic alert, and you can fit it with a head-up display, which projects driving information onto the windscreen as you drive, to complement its 5.0, 7.0 or 8.0 inch infotainment screen, all of which Hyundai says are perfectly visible, no matter how bright things are outside. 
the 7.0 inch and 8.0 inch units also support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Finally, you can cut down interior clutter further with wireless smartphone charging, although that's an option just as well if your mobile doesn't support it. And audiophiles should appreciate the option of an 8-speaker Krell sound system for better music quality. Other luxury kit comes in the form of an optional heated steering wheel and electric front seat adjustment plus ventilated seats for greater comfort in hotter temperatures. How does the high-end Icona drive? We've driven a pre-production car at Hyundai Stop Secret Test Track in Korea, and from the brief run we had, can confirm that for an SUV of this size, it's very good. So far, we've driven the 1.6-litre petrol in automatic form, which promises a fine combination of speed and economy. Both the engine and transmission are smooth, and fears little sign of the turbo lag at low revs some rival engines experience. Engine refinement is good but not class leading, though it settles down well to the league limit cruise, ticking over at a long leg 2200 revolutions per minute at 70 miles per hour. The gearbox works well, and is smooth in its changes, but if you want to get more life out of it, you'll have to use the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. It'll be interesting to see how many buyers do, though. The car we drove was in Korean spec which means it's softer than a UK car. But despite that, fears plenty of grip and a comfortable ride. The steering is direct, weighty and although not fizzing with feel, it's communicative enough to allow you to play in the bends with some confidence. Of the three driving modes sports, normal and deco, the latter two don't appear to do too much, but put it in the former, and the transmission becomes a lot more responsive.